Okay, those are the images that we are getting. The first images of the strong room being opened from where the EVMs will be taken and the counting will begin. Looking at those images tells you how much Bihar has changed. From the days when ballots used to be stuffed, ballot boxes used to be stuffed, or ballot boxes would be, would be taken away, would be virtually hijacked. And, you know, you would have... Uh, the election. first instance of a booth being hijacked happened in Begu Sarai in 1957. That's the first time we know of ballot fixing happening. Now we're in 55 counting centers uh, in the state of Bihar. Uh, these are across 12 assembly constituencies where at 8 a.m. they'll start opening these ballot boxes. 38 strong rooms set up across the state. These are live pictures coming in from our correspondents. The Election Commission giving us a preview of the preparations. 1,900 central armed police personnel. 1,6524 EVMs to be counted today, Rashtik. And at the end of the day, for all the criticism at times of EVMs, I think Bihar is a good example of why you need EVMs. I mean, it's not as if the, a world pre-EVMs was a great world. And in Bihar in particular, you found polls being, uh, you know, countermanded at times. Manisha ji, seen some of that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some of those and I've also been through a childhood where we were told that if the vote was not side mein side, so, open the bottle of the ballot box and put it in the ballot box. And there was one fellow who was a runner. You never did that? I never did that. But there was a runner who used to say, if nothing will happen, if it won't happen, then I'll take it in the ballot box. But the tea and session, the man who Lalu took, you know, cudgels with and said things like, this session will be taken away from the ballot box and said things like, this session will be taken away from the ballot box and means I will send him on the railway, this thing. I think he cleared the electoral <coughs> arena in ways in which Lalu did not anticipate and to Lalu's advantage himself. And Bihar does have a rather clean election now. There's a lot of faith in the electoral machinery. The coming out of women, for example, in large numbers to vote is a post-TN session phenomena as well. As much as we look at it as a Sushashan Babu phenomena, women feel secure enough to be able I to think, come to out to vote. To be fair, yes. it wasn't just Lalu Prasad Yadav who was doing this across UP, across the Hindi heartland? There were people, there were upper caste. They, I've seen sure. in Rajput dominated. No, I, no, we never said Lalu. I, I, we no, never no, said I was Lalu. talking. Manisha Ji was, we were only talking of Lalu in Bihar. It was, it was a phenomena happening across most parts of the Hindi heartland. And you asked Rahul Subhastha, we'll no, tell you. Not just Hindi heartland, sir. Sir, you're not just Hindi heartland. Let me be time. fair to you. Not just the Hindi heartland. There was an election in the heart of Mumbai in Bhindi Bajar. There was a Muslim League candidate and there was a Shiv Sena candidate. And me and my photographer, there was, you know, we were in print. We actually caught it on, ta uh, on tape in a way, in the sense he clicked it. The election was countermanded wow. in that particular constituency because, I mean, he was beaten up. I still remember Hoshi Jal, the photographer. He was beaten up by a group of supporters. It was happening. They were What they were doing was invisible. The ink would suddenly go off. They didn't hijack the ballot box, but they would remove the ink. Go in again, vote again, tap, 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 das laga diya, wapis nikal ke. It used to happen. Rajdeep, in 1990 in Haryana mayhem election, I was yeah. beaten up. Ah. I got 70 stitches on my head. You were there with my old friend. Because Narendra that's exactly Gulabi. what was going to happen. That was happening. We we had pictures in polling booths where ballot papers were stamped on mass. They had a huge sheaf of them. The polling staff was sitting on the side with men holding stand guns, and. And we whatever else, Nevada, Nevada will, uh, Nevada will, con, uh, will count faster than Nevada. Aran Singh Dhan. Whatever else happens, it's so clear we count more fast. Than four days, we'll tell you in four hours. Yeah, I mean, there are flaws in our system also. It's not as if the, there aren't, you know, the EVM is perfect. Would you agree, Rahul? There are, uh, do you believe that the present system, though, much better than the past? Yeah, oh, definitely. Sorry. In fact, what has also happened, so when EVMs got introduced since 1998, the number of invalid votes have decreased. Because even if you voted, the ink sometimes used to go to two symbols or three symbols. So two to three percent votes used to be invalid, okay. which now doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and we should also remember, TN Session did few things in 1990s, but Bihar election in terms became very safe after 2005 when KJ Rao, uh, who was then election commissioner and, and basically stationed for uh, many weeks uh, 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 and, and, and sort of like cleared the whole process. Let's go across to Tejaswi Yadav's residence. Ankit Tyagi joins us from there. Uh, Ankit, what's happening at Tejaswi's residence? We've got about 17 minutes to go before counting starts. How was his birthday celebration yesterday? What's he doing right now? Do we know? Well, uh, all we know from inside is that he's uh, watching television. I can't tell you which channel, but he is glued to the television right now. And outside uh, his residence, Rahul, 
uh, you know, in 2015 election, when the result was uh, being announced on that day, there were thousands of supporters of Lalu Prasad Yadav. This gate behind me was uh, open and people were just pouring in. I mean, it was a free for all at, at that day. It's just different, uh, you know, in this election after all the calls and uh, appeals that have been made by Tejasvi Yadav. Few supporters there. I'll just show you a handful of supporters. And, uh, uh, you know, once again, many would not be wearing the mask and social distancing. Of course, not something to be bothered about here in Bihar. But the fact is that it is a very different uh, kind of an atmosphere, though more energy here than if you compare uh, to uh, possibly Nitish Kumar's residence, the chief minister's residence. But uh, at this point of time, we have been told that at least till 10 o'clock, uh, there is not going to be any senior leader who is going to speak about the elections. They are going to be glued to the television screens trying to get uh, feedback from their candidates. All the candidates of the RJD have been told not to come to Patna before collecting their uh, you know, winning certificates. So they don't want a big uh, zoom here. They don't want a lot of people to be coming here. And that has been made amply clear. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, very quickly, because, you know, uh, you, you were talking and I've, I've been here throughout uh, the phases of the election of, of Nitish Kumar. The one thing that people will you keep hearing from the people are two words. A, the chief minister was missing in action. And the second word is Afsar Shahi. So do, those two things have gone down as far as the people are concerned. Something that has been the most chatter uh, during this election as well. Sankit, let's spend a moment, Rajdeep on the birthday celebration. Tejasvi's 31st birthday celebration. He's got Tej Pratap, his brother, who's a year older. There's Misa, uh, that is uh, Rabri Yadav. You've got Misa's children there. And, you know, what they've done during this campaign is they've kept the rest of the family out. Misa, Tej Pratap, you know, very limited campaigning. It's been all about Tejasvi. In yeah. fact, a lot of Lalu's old aides, like Prem Gupta, for example, you know, who would hang around Lalu, uh, have all been kept away. And I think it's a much more organized RJD as a result. You know, the uh, use of social media, the kind of press conferences that Manoj Jha, who is a critical element of their media strategy, is much more organized than the Lalu years. You know, I'm looking at those images and remembering Lalu 15 years ago, it would be chaotic. People would be all across his bungalow, people sitting on the garden, Lalu coming in and out. It was... You know, Brushing in front of everyone else. It, well, that was, you know, that was for the camera. But, you know, the fact is, uh, Rahul, I think Tejasvi has tried to bring an element of organization in an otherwise chaotic party. It's not been easy. As a result, some old R uh, Lalu aides have even left and joined the JDU. You know, before the election, when it appeared that Tejasvi didn't have a hope in hell, a lot of RJD leaders were leaving and joining the JDU. I think Tejasvi has brought an element of, not sophistication, but certainly organization... No, no, but Rajat Sethi, the reality is no matter who Tejasvi is and he studied in DPS, RK Puram, played some cricket, has some exposure, <laughs> the rest of the RJD supporters are still the same and if they come back to power, controlling them and reining them is going to be his number one challenge. Oh, absolutely. And this is what uh, uh, the youngsters of Bihar should fear if they haven't been fearing in the time of voting. Uh, if you look at this family aspect, uh, if you remember just last year, around May 2019, uh, Tej Pratap floated a new morcha called the Lalu Rabri Morcha. Mm. He, there was a big uh, family fight also as to who will uh, finally take the baton uh, from Lalu and be, that, uh, uh, the, be, the, be the prince in waiting of sorts. Uh, but that family feud has, has seemingly now been settled in, in, in favor of Tejasvi and Tej Pratap has decisively taken a back seat. Um, and he has allowed Tej, Tejasvi to completely run the show on his own and he will be in a supporting role. So that is something that has been settled, it seems like. But, you know, just look at the two years with Nitish when they were in power. He was the deputy CM and Tej Pratap was a minister. These are same set of hooligans had gone to the primacy. They were doing exactly what Lalu Rabri, Jungle Raj people had feared. Just in, in 18 months, they showcased that they are capable of carrying the same DNA forward and unleashing the same kind of Jungle Raj that people had feared all these There's times. also been a lot of talk about whether Tejasvi is a good role model. The BJP picking on that already, that he's a ninth fail, a uh, failed cricketer. How can he be, in a, in a state that produces the maximum number of IAS uh, pass-outs, how can he be a role model for the youth? That's the kind of narrative you know, that, 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 that is the elitism which perhaps the BJP can be easily turned on its head on the BJP. If we start judging people by government, their... By there are ministers in this government, you know, in the union cabinet, who are so, not... 
who don't boast of a great degree. You know, but look, look at the end of the day, Tejasvi Yadav has to be seen in the context of a leader who perhaps carries the baggage of his father, but also is trying to recast himself and the party in a new image. Yeah. So I think it's a challenge for him. Can, can I, uh, and I think Rahul has gone to the field, so he will be able to corroborate this. What I have heard from friends who traveled on the field, uh, that these voters were asked, what if uh, uh, Tejasvi returns and, and there is a rise in crime and jungle raj? Voters said, this is a risk, we are ready to take this risk. Agar aisa kuch hua, to bhi hata denge. What basically this tells that at the time of election, voters become sort of like they, they carry the agency, right? They basically talk about this is one time where we can change. So we realize there is a risk, but we will be sort sure. of like offsetting Let's the risk. Let's listen to there. Manoj Jha of the RJD, key brain think tank behind uh, this uh, campaign. Let's listen to what he said. He's smiling, you know, they're already celebrating. There was one RJD leader in whose house they were arranging for puri and chole and alu this morning. They've got all of this locked up uh, and ready to go. You know, the Manoj Jha is an interesting figure because till a few years ago, he was a professor in DU. Now, I don't think he would have been the kind of person who would be a key aide to a Lalu. You know, Lalu had a very different style of leadership. You know, he had Dabang Netas who surrounded him. A professor from DU advising him on media strategy, communication, concepts of economic more, justice, more he tying points. up with the Malay. You know, very much left of center, pushing the RJD more and more left of center, talking a language beyond just social justice ya Manuvadi Takte. Manoj Jha is an example of how from Prem Gupta, the closest state of Lalu, uh, who was accused of business, Haryana based the, the business. The other guy is very close to Sanjay Yadav. Sanjay Yadav, also Google from executive. Haryana. That's Google right. Google executive and, uh, and, and now working on their social media campaign, which has been pretty sharp. So that's the kind of. Uh, that's the kind of think tank he surrounded himself with. You know, Tejasvi in that sense has been wise, I think, in not making mistakes. You see, sometimes you don't have to, sometimes you win elections, if he does, by your agenda <laughs> of change, but sometimes by making the fewest mistakes. He has not fallen for the and trap of responding to Mr. Modi or the BJP on any national issue. Localized, localized, hyper localized. And that's a good point, Rahul Shivastav, advice to advice Because to draw a cricketing analogy, he knew which were the dangerous outswinging balls and he left them alone. Yes, he I didn't play anything on nationalism, Article 370. He, did lot, he didn't do a lot of things which traditionally RJD did, did in the past. And that's where Rajdeep, this time around the election, I will compare it to 1990. You know, uh, Ram Bilas Paswan, 44 odd years, Nitish Kumar, 39, Lalu Prashad Yadav, 42 years old, and they brought in a new change. This time around, not just Tejasvi Rajdi, I think even Chirag Paswan, both of them dynasts. Yeah. Both of them, their one father passed away before the election, one father is in jail. And they have tried to create a new terminology, a new language in this election in Bihar. And I think that's where lies the catch. That if there was an upsurge among what Rahul said, youth insurgency, there were these two young leaders taking on Nitish Kumar, who some people say tired, as you said, perhaps a bit uh, off track, they said it. You, there is something about these two men this time around, which is very similar to 1990 and might have a very critical impact on elections. You know, in fact, in fact the, the belief is BR changes uh, every 15 years. So, you, I mean, 1990 was the election where the Mandalized forces came. Then 2005, people seem to tire of just the rhetoric of Mandal, going for Nitish, who's a quieter figure from the Mandal movement, but talks about good governance. And now I think people are talking for Naya Bihar. Let's change it. It may not happen in one election. I think, in my view, this is whatever happens today is still a semi-final. I still believe new forces, new faces will come in Bihar's politics in the next 10 years. Because this is a state which has been dominated by Nitish and Lalu for the last 30 years. Who knows who the new face will be? You know, there, there are new forces that yeah, have changed so there. The one important thing is that political leadership has been a very contended issue in Bihar's electoral arena. In the first 30 years of its politics, there were almost 25 chief ministers. But if you look at how stable the innings after the 1990s have been, you will realize that notwithstanding the sharp political competition, there has been something in it for the Bihari voter. They seem to be getting something at the end of a Mandal era, at the end of a good governance era, 
and this time around Rahul Srivastava spot on Chirag and Tejasvi together have done the tango the primary pitch of criticism has been Nitish's Yuva Virodhi and the other part that is coming is the agenda part that is Tejasvi he is saying Dawai Kamai Sichai Padhai Main now the Bihari, the Bihari voter is so sharp that Tejasvi now will be judged on each of these and remember you all have gone on saying oh how he's done things differently it's only till the campaigning but I would wait to see the governance unfold there's a picture right there of Anand Singh and he's a strong man many of the faces behind this model of Yuva Virodhi and Dawai Kamai Sichai I find are the same old faces sure, that's why so I'm, that's I why mean, I said it's the semi-final election if, if I think is, they will, they if, will... The, if the Arab Spring and Youth Spring is here I would ask Will winter be far behind? Can he change the governance model enough to distinguish it from what Nitish Kumar handled and you know delivered to no, the isn't that too of much of an ask? Given, given the reality of anybody who knows the RJD, its composition, who these leaders are who are getting elected, you know, it's a very, very difficult ask to fulfill, Rajdeep. That's why Rahul, I think this is a semi-final. In my view, this is an election where you are seeing the first stirrings of what post-mandal politics could look like. I don't think there's been an election in Bihar where the economy has been as center stage as it has been this time. In the context of jobs, it's not as if there weren't, you know, it's not as if Bihar's job crisis started now. Industrial stagnation has been part of Bihar for decades. But this time it's been foregrounded. But, and my view, and this is contentious, remember Rahul, that just 18 months ago, the BJP swept Bihar with Mr. Modi as the face, 39 out of 40. What has changed between May of 2019 and October, November of 2020? According to me, COVID has foregrounded yeah. the issues of reverse migration, of the level of, you know, if students have to go miles, of, uh, uh, hundreds of kilometers through flooded areas to exam centers, the sense of despair and hopelessness. And Biharis are a very proud people. You know, there's a sense of a pride in Bihar, and I think they want to restore that Bihari identity. This is the first election towards the re restoration of a new Bihari identity. And I think Tejasvi and Chirag have caught on to it. Will they be the only uh, uh, sort of flag bearers of that? Rahul, that is where no, I'm Nitish uncertain. Kumar at some level also became possibly victim of what he delivered. Bijli, Sadak, Pani, people now took for granted, which was never there in Bihar. He helped bring Bijli, Sadak, Pani. People discounted that and said, what else? They needed employment, industry, uh, development. That's where Nitish Kumar, especially from 2015 to 2020, failed to give new impetus. I want to walk across to the election intelligence dashboard to give our viewers who are tuning in 